we are going to do a my test here. So you want to know? Can you see me? Will it be very lag or whatsoever? Can anyone listen to me? Should be should be okay, right? Right, so today we're going to discuss about this paper and yeah, I have so many technical issues right now, I'm so sorry about that. So yeah, so let's start about Yeah, so let's start about this live discussion. Alright. So I, I will just make myself short smaller a bit. Yeah. Okay, so let's move to the other side maybe. Alright, so yeah, let's begin the questions. So yeah, we will discuss about this one two two thousand eighteen May June paper one two. Alright, so okay. So you have some formula as usual. So I will start with question number one. Just do not want to waste time over here. And I hope my cell is not blocking the the paper. If I block my cell, actually I plan to actually delete my cell, but it's, yeah, it's fine. Okay, so you have equations like y equals to one plus tangent three x. So what you need to do is they ask you to state the period of the y so if the question asks you to state the period of the y, you know period actually is quite simple, right? In order to find a period, we just we just need to remember tangent always equals to 180, or you can say tangent always equals to pi. So I will just say 3x equals to pi, and x will equals to pi over 3. Or if you prefer degree, because this question doesn't mention anything about degree or radian, you can do 3x equals 180, then x will equal to 60 degree. Alright, so but I want you to understand over here is like what's the meaning of period? Period basically means like so like one cycle of tangent graph in tangent 3x. So if I got 60 degree, that's mean my one cycle of tangent over here will stop at 60 degree. This is what I call one cycle. So yeah, you have to understand like what is the meaning of period if you find the period here. Alright, then Alright, so on the axis below sketch the graph. So you want to sketch this graph, uh actually it's quite easy. Um uh, because we know one cycle is 60 degrees, they, and the question asked me to sketch up to 180. So I know basically I should have three cycle. I should have the three cycle over here. And then the question is one plus tangent, isn't it? So whenever I see the one here, so what I will do is I will always draw the line one first. So yeah, this one doesn't have one, so I'm going to add the one by myself. We'll assume this is one. Yeah. I can draw a better line if, yeah, if I have the pen and paper, but this is using the template, it's quite hard to draw. All right, so, Okay, so I want to draw three cycle over here, and because because one cycle, one cycle will be sixty degree, right? And my asymptote line here is thirty degree, so all the thirty degrees here will be my asymptote line. So this is thirty degree. So my tangent graph will never touch this one. So my tangent graph will never touch at ninety, and my tangent graph will never touch at one hundred fifty. So make sure you draw nicely one. Then you just draw the tangent graph. So this one should be your one cycle and stop at one. Uh. It's so important to stop at one here. Right, then you continue your tangent graph. And then you will stop at 120 and the y value will be one. And then we'll continue draw the next one. And then we'll stop at 180 at one here. Right, and begin at one and stop at 180. So yeah, this is something that's quite important. Okay, so make sure you understand how to draw uh, three what tangent 3x plus 1 because if y equals to tangent 3x 
plus 1. The plus 1 basically means the whole tangent graph going to shift up 1 unit. This is what we so call plus 1. So you basically you need to understand yeah, what is the meaning of plus 1. And tangent 3x just, just means uh, you should have 3 cycles in 180 degrees. So you can see here, I have 1 cycle here. And then the next one, this is repeating. And then this is repeating. So basically, this is the this is the first cycle, second cycle, and the last cycle, third cycle. So this is what do I mean by tangent 3x. All right. All right, so let's move on. And I see a lot of you are chatting there. Yeah, if I have any important thing, uh, yeah, I will read the message. If not, I will just move on. And now I find myself a bit annoying <laughs> because I'm actually blocking the question. Okay, let me do something more interesting. Okay, okay it seems like I cannot move myself. Okay, I guess... Okay, something wrong about my computer. Alright. Let's move on. Yeah, the... My computer... Okay, now they are, they are back. Okay, because I want to move myself to somewhere. It's not blocking. And I'll make myself even smaller a bit. Yeah, because I'm not important here all right so okay and yeah let's come back here okay so find the value of k for which the line y equals to 1 minus 2 ks does not meet the curve so when you see does not meet the curve basically it means b square minus 4ac less than zero that's all but in order to do the b square minus 4ac over here you know you basically you need to have this equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0. So what I will do over here is basically I will substitute my equation into another equation to get my general equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0. So what I will do is yeah, just substitution. So my y will equal to 9x squared minus 3k plus 1. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Should be 3k plus 1 x plus 5 since i substitute the y so my y over here you can see i changing to 1 minus 2 kx and then i will rearrange this equation before i apply the b square minus 4 ac all right so therefore i have 0 and will equals to 9 x square um okay this one lets me that expand it so this one minus 3 kx and then i plus the 2 kx from the other side and then plus x and then I have 5 minus 1, I get 4 here. Then I will just regroup the whole thing. So should get negative kx. So this one should be plus 1 minus k x plus 4. Now I have my a, b, c already after I regroup thing. This one is just simplify. You get negative kx, isn't it? Then I factorize x from both of these. Then I can easily get this. I know this is my a, b, and c. So what I will do here is I do b square minus 4ac less than 0. Then I will just solve this thing. So yeah, so I have 1 minus 2k plus k square minus 16 multiplied 9. You will get 144, isn't it? Yeah, minus 144 less than 0. I hope I didn't make any kind of mistake here. Yeah, minus 143. Less than zero because the the equation look a bit out of order. So I hope everything is fine here. Yeah, so I should get um okay this inequality. So yeah, so over here something quite important is yeah, please make sure you write the critical value. Because recently the marking scheme they add something like this. So after you type in the calculator, you know k equals to 13. Or k equals to 11, neg negative 11. So I will add this one as my critical value. And then inequality for quadratic, I will draw this one, negative 11 and 13. So less than 0, I will get a k value on between here. So k must be between 
negative 11 and 13. Yeah, this one should be my final answer. All right. So yeah, I see a lot of comment here. So yeah, I hope you all are okay. I will only pay attention on I will only pay attention on the question related to the paper. Yeah, I see a lot of out of topic discussions. So I, please allow me to just ignore it first. All right. So yeah, let's move on to the next question. All right, so the next question over here will be, okay, number three here. The variable x and y are such that when ey is plotted against the x square, uh, a straight line graph passing through the two coordinates here is obtained at y in terms of x. So whenever you see the question like this, something you need to pay attention is whenever you see something like this, ey and again x square, you should know this is linear law. When you see linear law, what you should do over here is write the equation y equals to mx plus c. Linear means y equals to mx plus c. Linear law means you can substitute something uh, into the y and x. All right. So I have y equals to mx plus c. And because it's ey again x squared, so I will make my ey as my y. I will make, make my x squared x y x so we just substitute the thing into here so e y gradient you should know how to find gradient right you have two coordinates it's very easy y minus y over x minus x so yeah y minus y over x minus x and then my x over here will be x squared plus c so in order to solve this one i just do as usual this is two over two which is one all right so x squared plus c so then you will need to, because this is one, right? X squared plus C. So you want to find C, you can substitute any of the coordinate. Of course, I will choose the coordinate, which is the easiest one, which is three, one. But remember, if I have the three, one over here, uh, the three here is X squared, the one is E1. Eh? So do not do something like E1, all right? So this is one. The whole thing here is three plus C. C will equals to negative two. So therefore, ey will equals to x squared minus 2. All right, and the question asked me to make y in terms of x. So my one last step is I'm going to move my y uh, e to the other side. It's ln x squared minus 2. Okay, so you just need to, if you still, if you have no idea what happening here, is you have to understand like uh, if ea equals to b, a equals to the ln b. All right, so you make sure you understand what happened here. So e move to the other side, you just get log base e, which is the ln. Right, so I guess this five mark is very easy. Yep, and any questions so far? Let me read the question here. Yeah, I don't think I have any important comment here. Okay, that should be fine. So yeah, I will move on to the next questions and yes so let me move on to the next question so the next question will be yeah my first time using my new computer for the live streaming so yeah a bit chat chat so yeah a lot of things like not so smooth but anyways let's continue so you have a particle p here and move so that uh, move so that its displacement x is meters from a fixed point O. So at the time T is given by this equation. So over here you see you basically you have a equation for displacement. So find the value of T. The question asks you to find find the value of T um, when the displacement is 3 meters. So you know 3 meter is just the x value. Just substitute into the x then you easily get this 3 mark. And do not substitute 3m right. 3 meter is just units. Alright so I substitute 3 here. You go to 5t plus 3. So e move to the uh, ln move to the other side is e power of 3 equals to 5t plus 3. Then I can get my t value easily will be e3 minus 3 over 5. Yeah, a lot of students ask me can can they actually leave the answer in terms of e? For me I would say it's okay, but uh, in order to make 
examiner easier to mark so i recommend you like rewrite this one into the three significant figures unless the question says they want unless the question say they want you to live in the exact value then you don't need to simplify so i will rewrite it t equals to 3.42 just easier for the examiners to mark your paper all right so okay so let me see some chat over here can someone explain when ln function intercept the sales by the inverse ln functions so what does a ln mean okay so if you do not understand what is the ln ln basically means the log base e all right so like lg is basically log base 10 yeah this is our uh, a common log and the natural log so yeah basically this is just like that and yes so i will need to yeah anyways yeah this is the mf question so if you are mf student you might find it a bit difficult so yeah i don't see any important questions here yeah those students say about paper a i guess maybe you are a level student yeah but here i only focus on igcse so i'm sorry and yeah it will be quite different with spm for some question all right let's move on so find the velocity of p when t equals to zero so in order to find velocity you know displacement go into the velocity you need to do the differentiation all right you need to differentiate it so therefore velocity will equals to the dx dt and you differentiate the equation above here i mean you differentiate the equation above here yeah so you should get one over 5t plus 3 and then mu multiply 5 here so therefore equation of v should be 5 over 5t plus 3 and since t equals 0, so I can get my velocity easily, just 5 over 3. Because 5 t, I make the whole thing become 0, so you just get 5 over 3. This 2 mark is very easy. Explain why after passing through the O, the velocity of p is never negative. So velocity of p never negative, so explain why. So there's few things you can explain. So, of course, the easiest way of explaining this one is, yeah, I can say that time is never negative. Yeah, because t, because the 5t plus 3 is, 5t plus 3 is always bigger than 0, right? Because time cannot be negative. So, no matter you sub 1, 2, 3, 4 into the t here, you always will be bigger than zero so therefore you will always will get the positive value right so yes okay so i hope you can understand this okay so let's move on to the next one find the acceleration of p when t equals to zero so in order to find the acceleration i need to differentiate v so it's dv dt just now the equation of v is 5 over 5t plus 3, isn't it? So I will need to differentiate this one again. So I will just simplify this one become, uh, okay, 5, 5t plus 3 power negative 1. Because I want to differentiate this one. So my h, I move the negative 1 to the front, become negative 5. Then 5t plus 3, minus 1 again, negative 2. Differentiate inside the bracket, I will get 5. So this one basically is negative 25 over 5t plus 3 power of 2. Right, this is my acceleration. The question asked me to find this one when t equals to 0. So when t equals to 0, that means the whole thing here is 0. So your answer is just negative 25 over 3 squared 9. Right, so I guess this is the answer. okay can you explain the part two again okay so for the part two over here whenever you want to get v you must differentiate displacement sometimes you write dx dt sometimes you write the ds dt 
Yeah, you just understand in order to get veracity, you need to differentiate the displacement. Okay, so yeah, I see the Brand Brandon actually asked, can we restart the paper? Actually, uh, this is YouTube Live, so like after half an hour after I finish, uh, the video will upload to the YouTube, then you can rewatch it. Yeah, that's not possible for us to restart now. Alright, so let me just move on to the question number five here. So the first three term in the expansions can be written in this form. So find the values of each of the constant A, B, C. So I will just expand this one, the first three term. First term is 3 power of 5. Second term will be 5 C1. And then 3 power of 4. And then multiply negative 1 over X power 1. Last term will be 5 C2. 3 power of 3. And negative 1 over 9x power of 2. Right, this is first three term. And some students ask, do they need to write plus dot dot dot? I would say unnecessary. But if you want to write, it should be okay. Alright, so then I will just type the cal type in the calculator. So this one should be 3, 4, 2, 4, 3. And then this one type the 5C1 times 3 power 4 is 81. And then divided by negative 9. So this sign should be minus. So which is minus 45 over x. And then same thing, I will type the 5C2. I mean 5C2. And then multiply 27 divided by 9 square. So this one should be 10 over 3 x square. So if the question asks about A, find the value of A should be 2, 4, 3. B should be negative 45 and C should be 10 over 3. Right, it's quite simple. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. Use your value of A, B, C to find term independent of X. So term independent of X basically means what? This one means constant. Huh? Because a lot of students will think this is x power of 1. Independent of x means there's no x. So that means after you expand, you should have a term actually do not have any x over there. So this one we just expand on the top. So I will just copy the first three term above. So it should be 2, 4, 3 minus 45 over x and then plus 10 over 3 x square. So this is the first three term just now I found it. So this is uh, nine, 2 plus 9x, I will just expand. This one should be 36x plus 81x squared. Right, so I just expand. I just expand this one. So, then the next thing I will do over here is, I want to find independent of x. Then I will start to think. In order to get constant only, 2, 4, 3 will need to multiply with 4 here. Uh, x power negative 1, you need to multiply with x power 1 because after you simplify there's no more x already and the x square here definitely need to multiply the divide x square need to multiply the x square here so therefore this is how i will write so i will write uh independent of x should equals to 2 4 3 multiply with 4 plus negative 45 multiply with 36 plus 10 over 3 multiply with 81 yeah then you should easily get the independent of x here then you can type into the calculator negative 45 times 36 plus 10 over 3 multiply 81 yeah you should get negative 378 if not mistaken do let me know if you got different answer. Alright, so let me move on to the next part. Number 6 here. And the questions will ask me to find the coordinate stationary points of the curve. So in order to find the stationary point, so you need to understand this one basically means dy dx equals to 0. 
do not need to do the second directive until the question say determines the nature of the stationary point because some students will think stationary point means you need to differentiate two times just do dy dx make it equal to zero but this question a bit challenging is you should know this one is the uh, product rule uh, i mean quotient rule all right so therefore this is u this is v when i do a differentiation i copy the okay just me write down the copy the v differentiate the u minus copy the u differentiate the v over v square okay this is a question rule all right so i will write my dy dx is equal to zero and then i will do my dy dx here so i will copy my v 2x minus one and then differentiate the u which is one minus i will copy the u and differentiate the v so you should know v equals to 2x minus one power half right so if i differentiate the v i will get half 2x minus 1, negative half, and then differentiate inside the bracket, I should get 2 here. 2 and 1 over 2 are simplified. So therefore, I will get 1 over square root 2x minus 1. So this one is over square root 2x minus 1. Divided by v square. So square root and square at the same time, you get power 1. All right, so it should equal 0. So basically what I will do now is I... I, I do not simplify the equation first because the question doesn't ask me live in certain pattern. So what I will do is I just move, I just move this one to the other side. Multiply becomes zero, so I can ignore it, and then I start to make them have the same denominator if I want. If I do not want, I can do like this. It goes to x plus two over square root two x minus one, and square root multiply square root. I get two x minus one. It goes to x plus two. Then I will get x equals to 3. Alright, but the question asked me to find the stationary coordinates of this one. So, yeah, I, then what I will do next is I will need to find the y coordinates. But I see, I see coordinates because I assume I should get more than one value. I mean, I expect I get 2x value over here. Did I make any common mistakes? Now my, I find a y first. So this one should be square root 6 minus 1. It's a bit weird. So this is 5 over square root 5. Yeah, if I multiply square root 5 over here. Okay, divided by square root 5. Yeah, y equals square root 5. My coordinate here is 3 square root 5. Is that the correct answer? Yeah, I would need to check the thing. Okay, this OBS is not friendly here because it's make my whole computer unusable. <laughs> I, I just use my friend so your differentiation for v is wrong is it 1 over 2 move to the front i get 1 over 2 and then minus 1 yeah negative half then differentiate i got 2 2 and this one differentiate should be correct right let me check the marking scheme I want to make sure this, uh, the answer is correct. So, question number six here. Yeah, which is correct. So you only have one coordinates, even though I see the coordinate net. Uh, the yeah, the coordinates here actually have the s here, but you only have one coordinate, which is this one. All right. So, let's move on to the next questions. So can you try to differentiate negative 1 over x squared? So yeah, some students ask me to differentiate this one. Negative 1 over square x. Then if I differentiate this one should be, I'll simplify it first. So it should be negative x power of negative half. So if I differentiate this one, I should get positive 1 over 2, x3 over 2. So it should be 1 over 2 square root x cubed. Yeah, if you want to know like how to differentiate this one. 
All right, so let's move on to question seven. Yeah, I just want to end this thing soon. <laughs> All right, so a population B of the particular bacterium T hour after measurement begin is given by this one. So, oops. Okay, oops. Sorry. Because I want to know like what happens like my whole CPU is like unusable. <laughs> okay, never mind. So okay, now I guess should be should be good. Alright, I come back here. Yep, so a population B of the particular bacterium T hour after measurement give you this equation. So find the value of B when T equals to zero. So when T equals to zero, E power of zero is basically E zero is one, right? So B equals to 1000. I get this one in just one mark easily. Find the time taken for B to be double in its size. So B in order to double its size, uh, double in size. So I guess double in size. This is one thousand, right? So I would, I guess they want to find when it will become two thousand. So one thousand e t over four. So I move the one thousand to the other side. I got two equals to t over four. Then therefore ln two equals to t over four. So the time should be four ln two. Yeah. Some student might ask, can they leave the answer like that? I would say. Tap in tap into the calculators and get three six three significant figures. It's easier for examiner to mark. Yeah, and it's very common if the people ask you about the time, you tell the people the time is four long two. It's kind of hard for them to understand, right? So if you t tell them the time is two point seven seven, it's kind of nicer, right? Yeah. So this is what happened. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so yeah, let's move on to the next one. Find the value of B when T equals to A. So the same thing, I will just sub into the formula. B equals to 1000. E, e is what? T over 4, right? So it will be 8 over 4, which is 2. Yeah, don't leave your answer like this. Type in the calculator. 1000 multiply E2. So you should get... If three significant figures, I will write nine zero. Yeah, you can always live in three significant figures. It will be good. All right, so yeah, let me read some comment here. Yeah, if you want to know about range and domain, actually I do make a specific video for range and domain. So yeah, you please go check it out. All right. If no, I will just move on. Yeah, if you are an SPM student, you might not know what is differentiate of ln x. So, yeah, just let it go. It's not in your syllabus. All right, so question number eight here. Solve the three goal here. So, I have three cos square theta plus four sine theta equals to four. So, in order to solve this equation, obviously, you see... You have cos square and sine. Normally, I want to make the whole equation in terms of cos or in terms of sine. But in this question, there's no way we change the sine without square. So I need to change the cos square. It will become 1 minus sine square theta. And then you will realize the whole equation actually is in terms of sine already. And you see sine square, you should know this is quadratic. All right, so this is 3 minus 3 sine square theta plus 4 sine theta equals to 4. Alright, so then I will just make it 0 because it's a quadratic. 3 sine square theta minus 4 sine theta and then plus 1 is equal to 0. Just simplify. So then over here, I will just say this is 3 sine theta. Multiply the other side. This one should be sine theta and this is 1 and 1 minus for both. So therefore, I will get my theta, sine theta equals to 1 over 3 and sine theta 
equals to 1. 1 is pretty simple. Sine will equals to 1 is 90 degree. We only have one answer. No need to worry about that. And this one, because add sugar to coffee, tell me what? Sine basically get positive in first and second quadrant. You type into the calculator. Calculator will only tell you the answer in the first quadrant. So therefore, shift sine 1 over 3 here. Make sure you change your calculator in degree. You should get 19.5. Then I will try to get a second angle, which is 180 minus theta here. So therefore, 180 minus my answer, I route off to one decimal, 160.5. So this is the three answer I have. If you ask me, do, do you need to actually write all the answer at once? You can do that if you want, but it's unnecessary. If you ask me, this is 19.5. 90 and 160.5 Right Yeah, you if you want to let the sine theta into the x you can always do that All Right, so let's move on Okay for the second part over here they ask about same thing but then the angle in radian first thing the second thing is negative angle Yeah from 2017 onward, yeah, you always will see the negative angle in trigo for IG. So this one is sine to, I will call this size, it's not like theta, I do not know how to call it. I just call it theta over here. So three, this is cos two theta. So therefore sine two theta over cos two theta, I will get negative three. I mean square root three, sorry. So this is tangent two theta, equals to square root 3, isn't it? Alright, so, so the first thing is I want to find a new range. So I will multiply 2 from the range here, so I get negative pi, 2 theta pi. Alright, so this is the angle I want to find for 2 theta, because later I will need to like inverse set 3. So if I change the calculator radian first, definitely, then you inverse tangent square root 3, you should get pi over 3 here, Alright, now something interesting here because now you want to find from pi to negative pi. Okay, so for positive pi, basically you're going to move this direction up to here because this is pi. For negative pi, you're going to move from here up to here. This is what happens to negative pi. Negative just move the opposite direction. Alright, so therefore, therefore, I want to say something is like if you can understand the positive and negative thing, we erase this thing because this is how I do this kind of question. Since it's pi over 3, I will do the pi over 3 for every single quadrant. Easier for me to explain to you. Because no matter you positive or negative, this one always works. And then I will see tangent get positive because of this one, add sugar to coffee. Tangent get positive in the first and third quadrant, right? So the first quadrant is very easy. First quadrant is just pi over 3, right? So I got my first answer, pi over 3. The second one is rotate up to here, isn't it? Basically, it's pi plus pi over 3. But then because over here, you want up to pi only, so you cannot take this angle. So therefore, your positive only have one answer, which is pi over 3. Then I start to do the negative side. Okay, the negative, the negative over here, I, same thing, I want to focus in these two quadrants only. So I will from my negative move up to here. So this one basically is my angle. So how to get this angle? You add a negative at the front, do the pi minus pi over 3. Alright, so definitely I, this is 2 pi over 3. La. So pi over 3, the second angle will be negative 2 pi over 3 equals to 2 theta. So if you want to find the value of theta here, you just divide 2. So you get pi over 6 and negative, divide 2, you got pi over 3. Yeah, I hope you can get some idea how to do this kind of questions. I see I have some offer for Nobel International School. <laughs> Alright, so 
No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right, so... So don't understand about negative. All right, so let me explain about negative anger one more time. Okay, maybe, maybe we just do the negative anger like this. All right, so... Okay, for negative anger, the add sugar to coffee is always applied, even for negative anger. So, therefore... You just need to know which quadrant you want to know because negative anger over here. Now this one will be your first quadrant because your anger going to rotate in this direction, right? If negative going to start from zero but rotate, this one will be negative ninety, this one will be negative hundred eighty, this one will be negative two hundred seventy, and of course this one is negative three hundred sixty. Because the anger changed already, so this one your first quadrant, this one will be your second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant over here. So therefore, in order to find the anger in the first quadrant, it's just negative theta. And the second quadrant is just negative 180 minus theta. Third one is just negative 180 plus theta. And the last one is just negative 360 minus theta. All right, I will give you some example to actually make you understand this. E example, I, I find sine x, sine x equals to negative half. And I tell you x must be between negative 360 to 0. Okay, let's say we only focus on negative anger. So therefore, if sine x equal to negative half, I will need to find reference angle first. So that reference angle tell me is 30 degree. And then I start to analyze, add sugar to coffee, sine get negative in which quadrant? This one and this one, right? So therefore, I will substitute my alpha into these two quadrants, we need, we need this quadrant and this quadrant. So I will substitute into there. So my x should be negative 90, comma, if I substitute 180 minus 30 degree, I get negative 150, right? Yeah, this is the two angle you will get. You still need to follow back the add sugar to coffee thing. And somehow you might doubt about my answer. So what you can always do is you type in your calculator, sign negative 90, and see what value you get and you type sine negative 150 and then you you see what value you get then if no surprise you should get negative one over two for this one this is how we find the negative angle it's basically quite the same just if you rotate the angle so whatever from your first quadrant right now is like one two three four one two three four for negative angle yeah, it's a bit complicated, but if you go try to like check it out, actually it's quite easy to understand one. Alright, so yeah, let me see is there any important question here? Alright, so if no, I'm going to move on to the next question. Alright, so Solve this one. This is a very easy log question. So x is just 10 power of 3, which is 1000. Right, so this one as a single log. So yeah, first thing is I will bring the 2 to the top, become square, log b square. Uh, 3, normally I will add the log 10 for it. Because log 10 equals to 1. Uh, 3 multiply 1 is equal to 3, right? So 1 is basically log 10, so I can add the log 10 as I, as I want. It's still 3. I do not change any value here. And definitely, you should know the 3 here can move up, become the power, and then factorize out the log 10. You should get a multiply 10 cubed over b squared because minus mean divide. So it should be log 1000 a over b squared. Done. All right, this is how I make it into a single log. Alright, so then the next thing is they ask you to solve this equation. Uh, I don't find any related, so I guess just solve normally. I multiply x for the whole equation. So I got x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals to 0. Then I just factorize as usual. I guess this is just a bonus mark. Examiner just worry you will fail your MF, so they give you some simple question. Yeah, so this is a very easy math question. Hang show that, oh, I guess maybe this one and this one is related. Yeah, they are related. So, all right, so because because what I try to make this one into this pattern, then you can see they are actually related. 
So I I will let I will let maybe log a log four a equals to x. Then you will see actually they are the same. So this is log four a minus five uh, and plus six. Oops, minus five plus six. So this one is a four right. So in order to swap the place base number between a and four, you just do the one over. Then you can swap immediately for a right equals to zero. So this one is basically is log four a minus five plus six over log four a equals to zero. If I sub the log four a into the x here, you will realize this is x minus five plus six over x. X minus five plus six over x. Do, do you see that? You should be able to see that, right? So if you can see that, then I'm not going to factorize again. So therefore, I know I should get these two answer, right? So I know my log four a should equal to three, or my log four a should equal to two. So my a should be four power of three, and my a here should be four power of two. All right, so. Yeah, type in the calculator, 64. Type in the calculator, 16. All right, this is how you should solve this equation to find a value of A. All right, so... Yes, let me see the chat have any importance. Okay, for, just for some students do not know what happened for the last few steps, yeah. Maybe I I let log four x uh, log four a sorry equals to x. So therefore, you can see over here I have log four a right log four a. So both of these I will sub into the x. If I do this x minus five plus six over x equals to zero right. This is exactly same with your equation above. So that means if I solve this equation, I already did in the part B one, I will get x equals to 3 and x equals to 2. But what is my x? My x basically is log 4a, right? Then I substitute back the log 4a here, equals to 3 and log 4a equals to 2. Then I solve it and then I get the final answer. Right, so I hope you basically understand here. Okay, number 10 here. So, all length in this question are in centimeters. So, the diagram actually show the triangle ABC. And AB will equal to this length, BC equal to another length, and angle is 60. Everything is uh, written in the diagram here. So, it sh it's known as sine 60 equals to square root 3 over 2, cos 60 equals 1 over 2. Yeah, the examiner is very kind. Just worry you don't have the nice calculator, then you, you couldn't get this value. So it just actually tell you. And something must pay attention to this exact value. Exact value does mean you should leave your answer in the square root form. You shouldn't simplify into the decimal or three significant figures. Alright, so definitely I want to find a length AC, two sides, one angle between this one is cosine root. So should be A square equals to B square plus C square minus 2BC cos A. So you have to use a cosine rule in this question. So I go, I'm going to apply the cosine rule here. So I will say AC square first. Later only I move the square root to the other side, become square root. So 4 sub 3 minus 5 A square plus B square minus 2 B C and then cos A, which is angle on the middle, 60 degree. Alright, so yeah, let's solve this one quickly. This one will be 16 multiply 3. It's 48, right? Yeah, this is 48. And then middle term should be minus 40, so 10 plus 25. Alright, so this one is the same. This one should be 48. And then plus 40, so 3 plus 25. Alright, this one... Yeah, I will need to work one more time. Um, this one is b square minus, yeah, is b square minus c. Ah, uh, is a a square minus b square. So this one is six sixteen times nine. Oh, yeah, sixteen times three. Sorry, this is forty eight. 
so minus 25 okay cos 60 will be square root 3 I mean 1 over 2 okay so yeah we solve the thing the term the same one we solve this one we simplify this one half and 2 I cut then I will plus all the number 48 plus 48 plus 25 plus 25 All right, then plus 48. Why so? Maybe this is correct. 169. Yeah, the number is too nice already. Something wrong. Because the answer shouldn't be so nice. So, yeah, because square root this one, you should get 13. Let me sub any value. 16 times 3. Minus this one, plus this one. A square is minus B square okay let me double check from the marking scheme I get AC equals to 13 here is that the correct answer so is it the question number 10 here no get one two three I am getting okay sorry this is minus <laughs> yeah don't make the same kind of mistake with me yeah so tap again 48 plus 48 plus 50 minus 48 plus 25 yeah get one two three so the answer is square root one two three all right so yeah this is how we get the answer for this question Okay, hang show that cosec A, B, A, C, B. I get A, C, B is the same. Okay, A, C, B, which is this angle. Equals to that value. Okay, interesting. Um, I guess it's a sine rule. I guess it's a sine rule. Um, yeah, let's do it. Okay, now I have the information which is AC equals to square root 1, 2, 3. So what happened here is I'm trying to get the cosec, so I will do uh, sine, sine theta. So I sine theta over the opposite length, which is 4, 3, minus 5, equals to sine 60 over uh, square root 123. Then I'm trying to get the value of sine theta so sine 60 is given which is 3 over 2 divided by square root 1 2 3 and i'm going to multiply like 4 3 minus 5. All right I, I will simplify this one to further a little bit so maybe i make everything into the 3 over 2 1 2 3 multiply minus 5 let's put a bracket for it I want to see what pattern they want me to leave my answer. 4, 3, plus 5. They want me to do some 4, 3, plus 5. Okay. Then I have a tiny problem. Second ACB. Is it cos second ACB? Yeah, it's that value. This is 1 over sine, isn't it? Yeah, sine theta. Because you get square root 3 plus 5, I get square root 3 minus 5. And... Should I multiply in? This is my second question. Um, okay, let me see what's strong here. Sine theta over this one equals to sine 60 over this one. Maybe I can simplify here. I don't know. 2 multiply square root 1, 2, 3. Okay. Make it 4 by 1, 2, 3. So 3 divided by my answer. 1 over 1, 6, 4. Nope. Something wrong here. 
I do not know how to show this one so let's check it out cos a c b cos a not cos cos sine this is 1 over sine a c b so basically I need to find sine a c b oh rationalize okay I got it I got it uh, okay let me just copy down this thing sub 3 over 2 square root 1 2 3 okay let me write it here so it will be sub 3 over 2 square root 1 2 3 multiply uh, 4 sub 3 minus 5 equals to the sine theta all right so I'm going to f f flip over become because this is sine theta right so if I want to flip over the whole thing I'm going to redo it so so cos second ACB so I flip over this one is 2 square root 1 2 3 and then over square root 3 and then over here I still have 4 third 3 minus 5 because I flip over is this thing in that end. so if I flip over I will do one more step which is the rationalize uh, okay, 2 square root 1, 2, 3 over 3. So, rationalize what I will do is I will multiply 4 sub 3 plus 5. I will multiply 4 sub 3 plus 5 here. So, therefore, the denominator here we will get 48 minus 25. Top here we will get 4 sub 3 plus 5. So, 48 minus 25 here. I get 23 so therefore I have 2 third 1 2 3 over 23 third 3 and then multiply 4 third 3 plus 5 yeah I hope P is 1 2 3 and Q is 23 is that correct Uh, not correct. Uh, am I did anything wrong here? Because answer will be slightly different over here. Let me check so, at the top here. Two. Theta minus multiply 4 sub 3 minus 5 it's 23 yep let's see what's happened here Because 2 square root 1, 2, 3. Oh, because I have a sub 3, right? 1, 2, 3 can divide by 3. Isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry. So this is 2, 23. Uh, the square root, I'm going to group them together because, yeah, because over here I don't have the square root 3. And I didn't realize that. So this one is square root 1, 2, 3 over 3. This is 4 sub 3 plus 5. So therefore, this is square root 41 over 23. 4 sub 3 plus 5. Alright, so this is how we do these questions. Yeah, it's a bit complicated, but I hope at least you can understand how to do this. Yeah. Any question? I dropped it last year and still know what's its cosine. Yeah, for cosec, you see the third letter. So cosec equals to 1 over sine. Okay, second equals to 1 over cos. And cotangent equals to 1 over tangent. Alright, make sure you know what's its cosec. Alright, so 
this is how we do this question so let's move on to the next part question 11 okay so the diagram will show the graph of this one so the curve will meet the y-axis at the point A and the normal to the curve at A will meet the x-axis at the point B find the area of shaded region and cross by the curve the line AB and and the line through B parallel to Y axis. Give your answer in that form E over A, where A is a constant. You must show all your working, which is the 10 mark questions. And yeah. So what is the first step to solve this kind of 10 mark question? Is the first step I will find the equation of normal. This is the equation of normal. So I will find the equation of normal and then at the same time I'm going to find what's in this line. So in order to find the equation of normal, I always tell my students you have four steps. First step, do dy dx. Second step, sub x value into dy dx. This one is to find the equation of normal. Alright, so the third step, you will do m2 equals to negative 1 over m1. And then fourth step, you form the equation. Alright, just follow these four steps. You can easily get your equation of normal. Alright, so therefore, um, okay, so let me use a space here. So I will do the dy dx here. But before I do a dy dx, I normally I prefer simplify my equation plus 3 over 8, isn't it? I just uh, move the a's to left and right. All right, so if I differentiate this one, I should get 4 over 8 e4x. All right, so I'm going to call it half e4x. All right, then the next thing is I need to substitute the x value into it. But in this case, we don't have any x value. And I know this is y intercept. Y intercept means what? x equals to 0. Mean x equals to 0. So I will sub 0 into my equation. y equals to 4, 0 plus 3 over, I mean e0, sorry. y equals to e0 plus 3 over a. So end up y value is 4 over 8, right? 1 over 2. So yeah, this is y value we use later. But then now we just need to know x equals to 0, right? So 1 over 2, e0. So your dy dx is 1 over 2. Now I've done the first step and I sum the x value into it. Second thing, you should know dy dx equal to 1 over 2. This one means gradient of tangent equal to 1 over 2. So in order to get my gradient of normal, it's just negative 1 over 1 over 2, right? You get negative 2. Now I solve the third step, I get an m2, which is the gradient of normal in this case. So then I can form the equation, which is a step 4 here. So I have the coordinates. 0 and 1 over 2, right, for coordinate A. So y minus y1, which is 1 over 2, m is negative 2, x minus 0. So y should equal to negative 2x plus 1 over 2. So this is your equation of normal. So after I got the equation of normal here, this is the equation of this line AB. This one is a line AB, uh, just in case you're a bit lost here. So I can easily got my coordinate B here. B is an x-intercept. x-intercept over here always make y equal to 0. So if I make y equal to 0 here, 2x plus half here, so 2x will equal to 1 over 2, x will equal to 1. Alright, so this one is 1, 0. Okay, now I got both of these coordinates. And then the question actually asked me to find an area of shaded region. Um, I want to find an area of shaded region. So my logic right now is I'm going to integrate the curve. I'm going to integrate the curve from, from 0 to 1. Then I will get the whole area here. I will get the whole area here. And then I will use this area to minus my area of triangle at the bottom. Then I minus the area of triangle here. Alright, so therefore, this is what happens. In order to get the shadow region, I will integrate my curve from 0 to 1. This is what I find just now. And this one is e4x over a plus 3 over a minus the area of triangle. Triangle is very easy because I have the coordinate already, right? This is, here is 1 over 2, here is 1. Even though it's not in skew, so, but I hope it's correct. So it'll be half times 1 over 2 times 1. Half times base times height. Then I can get my shadow region. So therefore, I will just integrate this one. So I get e4x. Divide by 4, right? So 32 at the bottom. Plus 3 over 8x. 0 to 1. Minus 1 over 4. 
Alright, so yeah, then the rest of the thing you just type in your calculator. You should be able to get the things easily. So yeah, you can do manually if you want. E4 over 32 plus 3 over 8 minus sub the zero, you will get 1, 1 over 32 only. Then the whole thing going to minus 1 over 4. Alright, then you type the calculator for this thing. E4 over 32 plus 3 over 8 minus 1 over 32. Then I minus 1 over 4. The question doesn't ask any exact value. So in order to make the examiner easier to mark my thing, even though I can straight away get my answer is 1.6. 1.80 but I will just show one more working is secure for that so this one is inside here I guess uh, 2.05 and then minus 1 over 4 then I get this value and I hope my value is correct then I can move on to the next questions oh sorry because the question say leave your answer in E right so you cannot live in decimal. Yeah. Because in this form. So yeah, therefore we need to do manually again. Alright, so this is E4 over 32 plus okay, make all the denominator become 32. Time 4, time 4, time 8, time 8. So it's 12 over 32 minus 1 over 32 minus yeah minus 8 over 32 so this one is e4 plus 11 over 32 minus 8 over. how come and I do any mistake again Yeah, because I will get 3 over 32, which is a bit different with the marking scheme. Oh my god, I got the wrong x value. <laughs> yeah, congrats to myself, I got the wrong x value. Yep, because because the 2, you move to the other side, it's not multiplied 2, it's divided by 2. So this is 1 over 4. So this is 1 over 4. Yeah, and I see a lot of students remind me over there. So this is 1 over 4. So this one should be 0 to 1 over 4. So this one should be 1 over 4 as well. So therefore, if I substitute in, I will get the different value. So this one is E1 and then this one will be multiply 1 over 4 minus 0. Yeah, that one is pretty much correct. So the rest of the thing here will be wrong. So yeah, so E over 32 plus 3 over 32 minus 1 over 32 and then minus yeah we can minus again right it's the same thing okay this is 2 over 32 and then this one minus 8 over 32 I still couldn't get the perfect answer here Mm-hmm. Area of triangle is 1 over 16. Oh, because the one is not 1, the one is 1 over 4. So all the value is changing here. So yeah. So this is 1 over 16. So this one will be time 2. 2 over 32. So I will minus 2 over 32. Then yeah, simplify. 
So I get E over 32. That's my final answer. Alright, so still have one more question. Question 12. So please explain the area of the shape. Like what kind of shape you want? How to do the tangent graph? Negative tangent graph, just like opposite. Yeah. Put the video on YouTube later. Yeah, the video will on the YouTube later auto automatically. Yeah, we can discuss a little bit on relative velocity after this. Yeah, I would say relative velocity mostly come out in paper two, but it do come out in paper one also. So tomorrow morning you will know. Can you go back to the question two? I don't understand how you determine the range of k. Okay, after, let me finish the last question. Then I go to you. All right, so, okay. So this question over here, I have something like 6, 8, and okay, so 6, I'm going to make it become 2 times 3 power of p. So 2p times 3p, you get 6 power of p, right? This one, I'm going to call it 3p plus 6 because 2 power of 3 is 8, all right? 3 power of q over 3 power of 2, 4q minus 6. All right, it's equal to this. It's equals to find the value. It's equal to 2 power of 7 multiplied 3 power of 4. So, yeah, we need to group the 2 and 3 things over here. Um, yeah, let's do it. So, it's multiplied, right? The dot here is multiplied. So, multiply, I can do plus. 3 please plus Q. Uh, I mean 3P plus 6. And then we'll multiply. This is 3 power of P. Multiply 3 power of Q mean plus. Divide mean minus. 4Q minus 6 plus 6. Alright, equals to 2 power of 7. Equals to 3 power. I mean multiply 3 power of 4. Alright, so then you can easily get the things. Which is. Yeah, this is 4P plus 6 equals to 7. Then P equals to. 1 over 4. So this one is P minus 3Q plus 6 equals to 4. P equals to 1 over 4 minus 3Q equals to negative 2. So 3Q plus 2 will be 9 over 4. Q will be divide 3, 3 over 4. Yeah, I hope I don't make carry mistake anymore. Alright, so let's move on to the next question. Using the u equals to x power 1 over 3 to solve this thing. So this is 4u plus this x power of 2 over 3 is equals to x power 1 over 3 squared, doesn't it? So this one is u squared plus 3 equals to 0. Then u squared plus 4u plus 3 equals to 0. Then I will factorize this thing u u 3 1 plus and plus so u equals to negative 3 u equals to negative 1 and solve the equation so u is equal to x power 1 over 3 this is negative 3 oh my god uh, okay because negative value is not good Hang so otherwise solve this equation. Um, 1 over 3, 1 over 3. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Because it's 3, right? Yeah, it's good. So it goes to negative 3. X equals to 1 over 3 equals to negative 1. So 1 over 3 move to the other side. It will just become uh, 3 over 1. Okay? Which is 3. So this one also power of 3. So therefore... This one equals to negative 27. This one equals to negative 1. Yep, I hope my answer is correct here. Yep, so basically done for this paper. And see anything, how to understand permutation and combination. Basically... A lot of things you need to do in order to understand 
that topic. That topic is you need a lot of practice. And basically, if you ask about permutation and combination, I would say permutation, whenever you read the question, you realize the arrangement matter, you do permutation. You read the question, you realize even sort place doesn't make any difference, then you do combination. All right, so will the lawn function ever intersect its own inverse? Uh, for the lawn or E graph, they will never. You mean intersect their own inverse? Yes, I think so. But normally, I draw the. I think the lawn graph cannot equals to yeah this this one I am not so sure. Because in order to like draw the EX and non graph like normally EX graph will be like this. I mean EX graph. And then your lawn graph will reflection over here. So this one is continue one. Uh. This is lawn X. I don't think they will intersect each other. Because why? You you want to know the they do intersect each other or not. You try to see EX equals to lawn X. Can you actually solve this one? Yeah. Even you can solve this one, you will find... I don't think you can solve this one. Yeah, so therefore, since this one is unsolvable, so I will say the EX graph will never intersect with the lawn X graph. Because the student do ask about this kind of question. Will there be any relative veracities about correlations of two subjects? Like the time correlation? Yeah. For relative velocity, right? If they want to do something like both speed boot and ship, they will meet it. They will meet each other, right? So basically, you they will come out the question in the relative, uh, in the column vector form. Actually, we have quite some some of these questions. We have few uh, this kind of question in the, our past year paper also. So is it like likely in the paper one come in the paper two? I don't understand you. Can you show how you do permutation combination like how your thought process is please so um okay the permutation combination question we on hold first because it's going to take some time can you tell us what kind of question will be yeah will be in a, a lot of students want to know like what kind of question in the paper one actually until today i also don't know because they do not have specific pattern, they mix and match. Yeah, but I will tell you is most of the question you have tomorrow will never come up. Um, no, not to say never, will less likely to come up in your paper too. They will still repeat the topic. So that means maybe you see the trigo question tomorrow. It doesn't mean your paper two don't have trigo anymore. You might have, but some topic if permutation come in paper one, I don't think they will come out in paper two again. Some topic is not so famous one will only come out in one of the paper. Like in relative velocity, if you see in the paper one, I don't think paper two will have again. How to know if the question one permutation and combinations? Okay, so for permutation and combination, I do have about few video about that. So you can go check it out. If you ask me over here about permutation and combination, I would say arrangement matter on doesn't matter so yeah maybe i give you some example lah, because so many students ask me about that so give me a moment okay so um okay is a bit okay come let's have a look a bit on permutation and combination i give you some example one of the question my student asked me about about this let's say we have uh we have male we have three male and then we have two female example i give it a name maybe we have john and then and then we have yeah any name we'll do and and we have Ben we have Benjamin we have Ben and then we have 
we have Michael. Okay, Mike. And then female, we have two female. Let's say we have uh, Christina. And then we have Stephanie. All right, so you have like male and female. If today they want to like, okay, they say they want to like, uh, being selected to take one of the posts, like, let's say it's president and secretary. If the question says the president must be female and the secretary must be male or opposite, uh, depend on the question, it doesn't matter which one is male and which one is female. In this case, if the president must be female, because most of the time when we see human, like boy and girl, we will tend to use combination. But in this case, because the president can be Christina or the president can be Stephanie, right? In this case, if I put Stephanie as a president or I put Christina as a president, it's a two different result. So in this case, the arrangement actually matter. So in this case, I must do two P1. Let's say they need to select they need to select two secretary, both also must be male. Example. So basically over here, I will do three, three male students, I going to select two. And the arrangement matter in this case. Because why? Because I have John, Ben and Michael, right? So my secretary can be John, Ben, or I can be John and Michael, or I can be Ben and Michael. So you, can you see the arrangement over there? So in this case, basically you have to use P. Alright, so let me modify this question a little bit. So if I want to mo modify this question, I cancel all this. I say I have 10 female and 6 male. And I want to select one for I want to select one for president, one female for president, two male for secretary. So in this case, I will just do 10 C1 for president, multiply. 6C2 for secretary because over here there's no way we identify is this 6 male is the same or different or whatsoever if the question doesn't give you the name in, in this kind of case right, I will just use the combination to solve it because I will not arrange them because as long as I have 10 female I just select one of them to be a president it will be good because here there's no way you like uh, differentiate them right so therefore in this case if without giving me name I will use C yeah this is the case actually like quite similar and a bit confused for some student and of course most of the time for NPR if you just too lazy to think but of course I will encourage student to analyze and think always well if you're too lazy to think this one is most cor mostly correct I, I can say mostly when you see the number they ask about num number code or they ask about letter codes or whenever you see the word arrange you see number you see letter and then you see the word arrange you use p if you want to use c mostly you see the word select or you see the word children or choose or you will see a human or any objects like ball like pen like books mostly you will use C but then parity is whenever you see the word arrange even you see book or you see human you see the word arrange you will need to use P and some question they will not tell you arrange or not one example uh, have five students over there like A B C D E so you have five different students A B C D E and then they want to sit in a row and take photo they sit in a row and take photo so you need to imagine if A and B the swap place is the photo still look the same or not? If the photo doesn't look the same anymore, this one is permutation. You cannot just say, oh, it's A, B, C, D, E, they are the same, just use a combination. No. Sometimes you really need to read the question and then you think if one of the people swap place, is the whole thing still look the same or not? If yes, then it's a C, if no, then it's a P. Right, I guess I explained too much about this, so let's move on see any more questions. Uh, yeah. S 
so can you talk about rate of change rate of change is a uh, very simple i don't know what you okay for rate of change <laughs> Uh, just a very fast so whenever you see the word rate straight away write the t and the d don't matter top here i can have i can have da i can have dv i can have dy i can have anything on the top so if i ask about rate of change of the area then it's da dt if i ask about rate of change of the y or then it will be dy dt so rate actually always mean dt at the bottom then the next thing is you must able to write out the change rule so if today i have the dy dt if i write a change rule i will draw two lines for fraction dy right at the top dt right at the bottom middle these two must be the same these two must be the same thing so in this case will be dx and dx Right, this is a chain rule then you will sub you need to substitute these two information to find this thing you want all right and unit vector please unit vector is very easy you want to find unit vector of a just use the vector divided by its length so let's say a equals to 3 4 then the length of a will equals to 5 do the Pythagoras lah. 3 square plus 4 square then you get 5. So the unit vector of A will be 1 over 5, 3, 4. This is how we do the unit vector. Okay, for relative velocity, it's a very long topic. Um, I am thinking how do I explain relative velocity? Uh, I will ask you to go to watch my video about relative velocity. <laughs> Because too much really, relative velocity is not like I can make you understand in 10 minutes. Binomial expansion is very easy. You have the formula, just expand it. Graph functions, I also have a specific video for graph function. You just go to my channel and type domain and range of the function. I should have an entire video for it. Can do one example okay yeah let me do a little bit about range and domain here um, okay okay example let's say today you have a ex or e2x it doesn't matter Okay, so I will say fx equals to e2x. Then I ask you to find the domain of e2x, sorry. So the domain of e2x, e graph is very simple. They will from the net, they will from the negative infinity go up to positive infinity for the domain. So therefore, I will say x will be all the real number. It can be positive infinity to negative infinity, so it will be all the real number. Okay, range will be a little bit complicated for ex because you imagine if y equals to e2x, how do I, what value I should substitute into y to make it undefined or to make it math error? So, in order to make it math error, as long as the y is equal to zero, you get math error because you cannot learn zero. As long as y is any negative value, you get math error. If not believe, you can try to substitute negative 2 equals to e2x. Then you need to solve this one, right? 2x equals to ln negative 2. But ln negative 2 is undefined. So therefore, range for e2x, the f must always less than, uh, must always bigger than 0. Must always bigger than 0. Because and if as long as you cannot equal, as long as f is equal to 0, you get undefined. Or x is less, f is less than zero, you will get undefined. So same idea, then we will go to the ln. Because we know the ln graph basically is a reflection. Let's say this is ln x. It will be a reflection on ex. So if today I have the ln x over here, I want to find the domain of it. So basically domain, I will just copy the range. 
because they are related, isn't it? This, uh, this is why they ex uh, reflect on the y equals x. So I know my long graph, the domain x must be bigger than zero. Because you can see over here, my long graph will get very close to zero, will get very, very close to zero, but it will not touch zero. Then it go to positive infinity, lah, so must be bigger than zero. So if you ask me about if this one, uh, your f inverse or whatsoever, so the range of this f inverse, I know it will be all the real number. Because the range will from negative infinity to the positive infinity. So it will be all the real number. Yeah. For some students, if you don't idea what is domain and range until today, basically range is everything you see the graph from the horizontal x axis. Do domain, uh, I mean range uh, do domain is everything you see on the x axis. Range is everything you see on the y axis. Okay, this is uh, what uh, you should know about range and domain. So example, just in case you have no idea. So if I draw my graph like this, my, let's say this is one, this is nine, this is three, this is 10. So my domain in this case should be, my x should be between zero and one and one to nine. My range should be between three to 10. Yeah, this is the idea about range and domain. All right, so let's see anything else. Can you give up tips for exam tomorrow? How do you get the best mark? Uh, okay, so yeah, actually I do I, I don't have any tips for student but as well I know you should bring extra calculator if you if you just used to your calculator and I always encourage my student bring this kind of calculator because it's easier this calculator will give you pi over 3 if you use the old version you will get that small yeah and this kind of calculator actually is quite easy to type fraction and whatsoever and bring more blue pen red pen uh, no you can use red pen sorry and bring pencil as well and sleep early yeah you should go to sleep now actually yeah you need to rest early because your exam will be at 9 10 so you need to rest early and i let me just finish i almost want to end this live here so i just trying to see any more question i will reply yeah i'm so happy like so many of you find my video actually helpful so yeah if if you haven't watched any of my video you can go check it out but then i think it's too rush for your paper one maybe it can help a bit on your paper too i am not sure about as long as i know igcc they should be allowed uh for calculator maybe some other exam calculator is not allowed and for asymptotes right. differentiate power three go and function i do have the video about how to differentiate sine cos tangent exponent and ln go check it out another example of domain or exponent please oh, all right i just give one more example about domain range uh, uh, about exponent graph so um, let's say I make the equation complicated a little bit. So uh, let's say I say fx equals to 3e to x plus 2. And I ask you about the range and domain at the same time. So basically plus 2 means what? Uh, the, the, do the domain doesn't change. Even though I write three x or four x, it doesn't matter. The domain is still x will be all the real number. But the range is going to change a bit because it, right now, if I even I put the two as my f x here, I will still get a math error. So whenever you see plus two here, basically it means your graph going to shift up two units. This is the value two here. 
and then your E graph here should above this this is what they call asymptotes line should above here and your EX graph here can your exponent graph here can never touch the 2 so your range must be bigger than 2 okay this is what happened if you have a plus 2 so if you try to substitute 1 into fx you still will get an undefined all right this is what happened yeah so can you explain trigonometry where it have the range and negative pi over 9 positive pi over 9 can't that pi symbol out but in radian form yeah if you do not know how to convert uh, any you can get the degree toward the radian or you want to live in the pi form you always like multiply pi over 180 let's say 60 degree I want to change it into radian I will I will use a 60 multiply pi over 180 then I simplify then I get pi over 3 right this is how to convert degree into radian you can do manually if you want how to differentiate the equations with the power 3 3 go of function all right so let's say today you want to differentiate let's say example sine cube x so basically this one you first thing is you need to change this one into the sine x cube then you move the 3 to the front and then minus 1 whatever inside copy only become 2 and then you need to dif differentiate inside the bracket one more time differentiate sine x you should get cos x so this one should be 3 sine square x cos x this is how to multiply how, how to differentiate 3 go in when your power is more than 1 circular measure is very simple <laughs> you please check go check it out online video have a lot of students do a lot of teacher do about circular measure yeah you just go to my channel and you type permutation in my channel you go to my home page you just go to my home page and then you there's a small search function search button over there tap click the search button and tap permutation you will see my video over there how to get greater uh, quadrant of trigonometry with a range is negative value and positive value i do explain about the negative angle how to find in this video so you just later you just go to search the trigo question in this paper and i explain over there about how to find all the negative value all right so what's the formula of computing square yeah i don't have don't really have formula yeah I actually do have a formula for computing square but i don't find it useful i'm not sure about that i so long never do computing square formula should be something like x minus what is that uh plus b over a square and then minus uh, so this one will minus so this one will be b square b square a b square over a plus c it's not mistaken now it should be like that this one is for a x square plus b x plus c yeah this is this one should be common square formula you can go google you can easily get it Yeah, I, I believe I do have the intercept question for relative velocity video. You just go to search my relative velocity video. I do do the question about speedboat and ship and all that. Can you do 2018 June paper 2 one question 10? Uh, not really because right now yeah you you guys actually need to rest early and right now actually it's quite late i will do another paper is like one day before your paper two it's mostly another videos for paper two will i will live streaming on the sunday night uh, according to malaysia time because i believe most of the students will have the exam on monday morning 
if I not remem remember wrongly. So yeah, I will have another live streaming on Sunday. Maybe I make it a bit early to not yeah with, uh, because a lot of students do not want night. Maybe evening or afternoon. I would I will post the time again in my YouTube channel. Yeah, so make sure you just stay tuned. All right, so yeah, I'm in Malaysia. So in if for some student you are from other country, yeah, you can check from Malaysia time. All right, so it's Malaysian time Sunday. Not sure yet on if evening, afternoon or night. I will double confirm at my YouTube channel. All right, so yeah, all the best for you guys and. Yeah, for whoever want to donate, you do not. I do not need your donation yet. But you please go to my Facebook page if you find my video useful. You can give me some review in my Facebook page. Y equals MS plus C. You will see me on the Facebook page over there. Yeah, please write me a review. Yeah, thank you so much and all the best for your exam tomorrow. Yeah, see you guys soon. Bye bye.